Elon Musk says his $44 billion deal to acquire Twitter cannot move forward until the social media site clarifies the number of fake accounts on the platform. He now wants the Securities and Exchange Commission to investigate and get involved. Joining me right now is the former chairman of the SEC. He is the CEO of Calorama Partners. Harvey Pitt is here. Harvey, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being with me this morning. Good to be with you, Maria. So let's just lay out the groundwork here. I want to get your take on what we should be, how we should be looking at this. So uh, we know that Twitter put an SEC filing forth, and it said that 5% or less of its active users are fake, 5%. Elon Musk, as you know, had a problem with that and started saying, no, it's closer to 95% or 90%, not 5%. And then he came out with, well, I think it's 20%, which is still much more than what Twitter put on its SEC filing. Is there a way to get to the bottom of this? And do you believe that Twitter committed fraud by putting a 5% number on that SEC filing? How do you see this? I don't believe that Twitter necessarily committed fraud. Um, Twitter said that they estimate that the amount is not more than 5%, but they also stated that um, it could be higher. And uh, Musk knew all of this going into the transaction. He accepted a deal in which he did no initial due diligence and agreed to pay a $1 billion breakup fee. So I think this is all a negotiating ploy by Mr. Musk. Wow. So a lot of people are saying he's trying to get the price down. That billion dollar breakup fee, Harvey, I mean, can that go through if he says, look, I didn't know this. I think it's much more than 5%. Is that a way for him to walk away and not pay the billion dollar breakup fee? I don't think so, unless it could possibly be shown that Twitter knew the number was much, much, much higher and that it deliberately um, disclosed a lower number to mislead. I think even if that happens, however, if um, Mr. Musk walks away from this transaction he will be sued left and right and become a professional defendant for the next five to ten years uh, as a result. Well, because there's such an impact here, right? I mean, if, you know, advertisers pay for that kind of, you know, population, and if advertisers think 100% of the active users are really active users, then they're going to pay up. But if then they find out that it's so little, 5%, then advertisers were misled. Then you would have a potential cause of action. But as I read the Twitter disclosures, Twitter was um, very wishy-washy on the total number. They yeah. said, we don't think it's more than 5%, but they also disclosed that it could be more than That's 5%. True. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, thanks for taking this on for us, Harvey. I want to move on to get your take on these new rules coming out of the uh, SEC, as well as all agencies. So companies are going to be hit with a big bill if the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, pushes through these rules. The agency estimating its proposed climate rule could cost publicly listed small company an additional $420,000 a year, up to $530,000 for a bigger firm. The plan would force all public companies to follow climate change change rules, including emission disclosures from suppliers, from affiliates, from customers. Harvey, what do you make of this climate agenda moving through virtually every agency of this government? And it's landing on, you know, the doorstep of companies who are already facing higher expenses from inflation. I think that there is a problem with the SEC overreaching itself. The difficulty here is not that climate disclosures should be made. Um, I think most people agree that given the administration's policies, climate disclosures may be material. But what the SEC has done in its rules is it is dictating to companies how they should be calculating their emissions. There is an agency that was designed to do that, but it's not the SEC. It's the EPA. And so what the SEC is doing 
is going well beyond its mandate. And I think the costs uh, of these proposals will be staggering. And the SEC is traditionally not a very good estimator of the costs of its own proposals. And you've seen the impact of heavy regulation on growth, right? I mean, it, it zaps it. It is definitely having a negative impact. Companies are very concerned. And um, I believe that there's a need for a much more scaled down approach to these issues that looks at financial materiality, which has always been the uh, governing uh, benchmark for determining when disclosure must be made. Yeah, it's a great point. Harvey, thanks very much for joining me this morning. Great interview, and I so appreciate your time. My pleasure.